The way we quantify an LI's performance needs a reboot. For years, our industry has relied on synthetic benchmarks to tell us how software will run in production. While most new code has actually moved away from a monolithic approach to microservices, today's applications are not matching our benchmarks. There's a growing disparity between the simplicity of the static benchmarks and the complexity of distributed services. Performance depends on the specific workload, the data set, and the holistic platform. But most traditional benchmarks use artificial proxies that don't reflect the real world demands. And they're usually designed to measure just one component, not the whole platform. This can be a major pain point for developers. You might see great performance with a synthetic benchmark, only to be disappointed once you run in production. The solution? A technique called active benchmarking. To hear directly from one of the most respected performance engineers in the world, let's take a call from Down Under to hear firsthand from Brandon Gregg from Netflix. Netflix is one of many large sophisticated dev shops who've joined the challenge to reinvent benchmarks for modern applications. G'day, my name is Brendan, and I'd like to share with you a process of benchmark that I analyzed earlier this year. There was a new processor and a CPU micro benchmark showed that it was 2.6 times faster than the current Intel processors we were using. 2.6 times. Wow, that's a huge result. Think about what would you do given a result like that? Now I've done benchmarking for a long time and I summarize it as nearly 100% of benchmarks are wrong or deeply misleading for some reason. How I tackle it is I do something I call active benchmarking. And that's where you analyze the benchmark while it's still running. You don't just look at the results afterwards and do statistical analysis. So for this benchmark, I began by doing analysis using CPU flame graphs. This is a profiling visualization I invented 10 years ago that are now widely available, including in Intel Vitium. Now the CPU flame graph for this micro benchmark turned out to be not very interesting. It showed that all the CPU time was in one function. So to drill down deeper on that function, I used instruction level profiling. Now I happen to be on Linux, so I'm using the perf command. And now I can see instructions and the time in each. And as it turns out, 85% of CPU time was in one instruction, the div instruction. So if you think about it, this is not really a CPU micro benchmark. It's more like a div micro benchmark. And the reason for the 2.6 times win was that the other processor had a faster div instruction. I confirmed this by writing my own div micro benchmark, and I also looked at the timing sheets between the processors to compare them. What does this mean for the Netflix cloud? Well, I used PMCs to measure time in the div instruction for some microservices and found that it was less than 1% of time. So I would expect the performance win for this one difference between the processors to be less than 1% in production. Now, this is very challenging. The challenges are this benchmark is widely used, not just the benchmark itself, but the algorithm that, that it uses is one of those standard computational algorithms that's used everywhere. I'm not gonna tell you the specific benchmark that I ran because it may mislead you if I didn't list all the different places it can show up, which is everywhere. Another challenge is cycle analysis that I used to find out what was really happening is nearly impossible in the cloud. As many people have moved their workloads to the cloud, they're running usually under hypervisors, and hypervisors can block the performance monitoring counters, the PMCs we use for this type of analysis, and also the precise or processor event-based sampling that I used to see that we were in the div instruction. Now, without PEBS, your instruction level analysis tools may still work, but the amount of time shown by each instruction is inaccurate. Now, I've done this type of analysis before, and I can look at a list of instructions and time in each and recognize that something's not quite right, and then go and debug this in the cloud and figure out how to make profiling work. But this is a senior engineering level activity. And the other challenge with this is benchmarking is seen as a junior level activity. 
where someone needs to just run the benchmarks and then present the results in a slide deck. But getting to the bottom of this, doing instruction level analysis, finding out that instruction level analysis doesn't really work in the cloud unless you do special things, that's really a senior engineering activity. So it, it's not just this benchmark. Nearly 100% of benchmarks are wrong or deeply misleading in some way. I've published a benchmarking checklist to help you go through this in more detail. And the first two items are especially helpful. The first is, why wasn't the result double? Answering that can help you identify what's the true limiter and whether that makes sense. And the second one, was it tuned? Nowadays, with so many new processor features coming out, it's important to fairly evaluate the performance of a processor by turning on all these special features. And so that's an excellent thing to check as well when evaluating benchmarks to see if all of those things have been turned on correctly. It is an exciting new era of processor innovation. We have vertical stacking, new capabilities on die, and there's also more processors and processor competition, which I think is exciting and good for the industry. But it is also a very challenging new era of processor benchmarking because there's increased demand for understanding the differences between these new processors and their new features. And as I said, it's very hard to debug in the cloud. And many of the popular benchmarks that we use can and, and usually are wrong or misleading for some reason. Good benchmarking rewards and drives innovation, and that helps everyone. I hope I've shared some advice to help you do some good benchmarking yourself. Thanks, Brendan. We have proved Brendan is spot on and not alone, and we want to make performance analysis a real focus again.